So one thing I've been looking into over this week is this all new Academy series, an open wheel series designed to give female racing drivers a leg up in their motorsport careers. This series is, as far as I can tell, separate to the W series, a series that divided opinion amongst racing fans and also female racers. But since the W series had to stop due to funding problems, this is the replacement, but at the same time, not the replacement. But while the W series used the Tatus F3 car, this new Academy series appears to be taking a sort of step back and is now using an F4 car, as if it's resetting everything on the way up. And the big kicker of it all is, well they're not even broadcasting it. Now I probably should do some housekeeping here, the point of this video is not to say give the girls a go, let them raise diversity, equality and, and all of that. The point of this video is that all of this sounds like another own goal. Why set something up and then not broadcast it? And also any pros and cons associated with putting something like this together. Okay, there will be highlights and social media stuff, but watch as it's then buried under everything else, such as the way of the internet, everybody's trying to shout as loud as possible to get all attention on them. Broadcasters such as Sky, Channel 4 and so on will be allowed to put highlights packaged into their broadcast, but for someone like Channel 4, it might be a little bit difficult because they're so limited for time anyway. That said, David Coulthard was a big supporter of the W series and was able to get that broadcast in full, for free, on free-to-air television in the UK. And it was fun to watch. And I can see why this series exists. Compared to other forms of motorsport, females in open wheelers isn't something you see all the time. Well, there has been a handful of female drivers in IndyCar, such as Danica Patrick, Simona De Silvestro, Pippa Mann, Anna Beatrice, you know, just to give a few examples. But on the Formula One ladder, there has been one or two that have done F2 and F3, but they've not been there very long. Carmen Horda, Tatiana Calderon being the only two I can think of off the top of my head, at least. But if you look elsewhere, there's a fair number of female racers in Rally and Rallycross. Molly Taylor, Hedda Hosas, Katie Munnings, all following the trail blazed by Michelle Mouton. There's also Jess Hawkins and Jade Edwards that have been in the BTCC, Lydia Wormsley in the Minis, Esme Hawke in the Porsches, and the all-female team, the Iron Dames in endurance racing. But for single-seaters on the Formula Ladder, none, really. So this Academy series gives them a place to race to either with themselves an F3 drive or impress sponsors. At least that's the theory in my head anyway. The difference is, compared to the W series, this Academy series isn't free. It costs each driver €150,000 in entry fees, which is subsidised by Formula One, not the FIA. This is Formula One's own series, but it actually improves on the W Series. The W Series was supposed to have had 10 races last year before it folded. The Academy Series has 21 races at 7 meetings, so 3 races per weekend, and offers about 200 minutes of track time versus 90 before. But the problem is, the Academy Series is not on the F1 support bill and is also, as we've established, not going to be televised, not even live streamed across something like The Race or WTF1 or, you know, they could have even paid F1 content creators to broadcast it instead. They're racing at the Red Bull Ring tomorrow. Now I'm pretty clued up on what is happening where and when, even though I won't be watching either because I don't have the means or because I'm out, which is what I will be tomorrow, but the point remains. The WEC is at Spa tomorrow, there's NASCAR at Dover, F1 is in Baku, but until I started loading up the sources to be able to put all this together, I didn't know when this thing was on, or where they were racing, or who was racing. Brilliant start. It's like setting up your own business, not telling anybody you've got one, and then wondering why you don't sell anything. At the risk of sounding like I'm all-knowing and some sort of oracle, even though I'm, I'm clearly not, if I don't know what's going on, what chances the target audience? You want to get young girls interested in racing and engineering and stuff, give them a chance to watch it. But one thing that has been pointed out in some of these reports is that this series should help a bit better than the W series, given that there was such a lack of progression or a perceived lack of progression from that series up the ladder. And because there are more races and more track time, there's going to be a better chance at development for those who compete, assuming the grid is maxed out. There will be 15 drivers, three per the five teams on the grid, and hopefully that'll expand into next year, assuming that it continues into next year. So the overall package appears on paper to be better, so the W series might be consigned to the history books and this taking over. But if the W series does come back, you might end up with drivers doing both series. But the problem still lies here with the lack of coverage. Surely if you're going to try and push something, you'd do more. Why not broadcast it this season to try and test the water and if it doesn't work, knock it on the head? 
Wouldn't that be a better idea than not broadcasting it, then broadcasting it next season, assuming it gets that far when it's on the Formula 1 support bill, which is what they're aiming for, and then run the risk of nobody watching and then going, why is nobody watching? While they are running a hugely limited broadcast package this season, the last round of the season from Kota will be broadcast, and like I say, they'll be on the support bill for F1 and maybe give it more TV time thereafter. The Academy series does seem to offer a more full-time option. The series organisers reckon there'll be a driver from the series in F3 within a couple of years. But I know there will be concerns that the winner of the series who gets up into F3 might just end up tootling around at the back and not really making any significant dents in the championship, which then makes the whole series totally pointless in some people's eyes. But as one commentist put it, the amount of young guys that want to race cars is significantly higher than the number of girls that want to race cars. Have an all-female series and you can sort of increase and develop that talent pool. A good comparison would be women's football. 20 years ago, women's football was seen as something that would never take off. In some areas, it was seen as a joke, and national teams were cobbled together from whoever was available. Then the leagues started getting taken seriously. The female players then had more accessible leagues to play in. The hard ceiling was softened, and now it's at a stage where it started to become a stable career, where the players are now full-time professionals in some cases. Then, in 2022, 87,000 people watched the England vs Germany Euro final at Wembley, which is what the men are getting. But still, the amount of young lads that want to play football is going to be significantly higher than the girls that want to play football. What has happened is that now, it's been proved that an end goal exists. And this is the sort of double-edged sword with things with really. In effect, female drivers are damned if they do and damned if they don't. If they end up racing with the blokes, it's tokenism. It's box ticking, it's, hey, we're being diverse, look, we've done the diversity thing. You get people online complaining about stuff being woke, because that's the latest buzzword for stuff I don't like. But if they don't race with the men, it's, why haven't we got any women in motorsport? It's such a weird thing, if I'm being honest. Because when it comes to the European racing ladder, there is a reason for these kinds of programmes to exist to help out. But on the other hand, Danica Patrick, Sophia Flersch, the Iron Dames, Tatiana Calderon and the likes of Hedda Hostess, Katie Munnings and Molly Taylor in Rally say that these programmes have no reason to exist because it's clear that women can hang with the men. The last time a female driver entered a Formula 1 Grand Prix was Giovanna Amati in 1992, driving for Brabham. The only female driver to score points was Lella Lombardi. In all, two women have made the start of a Formula 1 Grand Prix. Lombardi, as we've already established, and Maria Teresa de Filippis back in the 1950s. Five female drivers have entered a Formula 1 Grand Prix. Filippis and Lombardi, Davina Galisa, Desiree Wilson, and Giovanna Amati. Filippis and Lombardi made the grid. The other three failed to qualify. But as test and development drivers, there's been more than a handful. Catherine Legg tested for Minardi in 2005. Susie Wolfe was at Williams, Maria Di Velotta was at Mauricio, Simona Di Silvestro was at Sauber for a time and was odds-on to compete in 2015 before it all went south, and Carmen Horda at Lotus. Currently, there's Jamie Chadwick at Williams. But the grid for this Academy series is filled. All 15 slots have got a driver attached to them. So far, so good, but can I have somewhere to watch it, please? You've got the cameras there for the highlights, so you're already paying for it to be recorded. You just get that little bit of a feeling that next season they'll be going, sorry, had to cancel due to lack of interest. But I'm happy to be proved wrong with that. Like I say, it's a double-edged sword with this kind of thing, but if it helps somebody somewhere, then sure, go for it. Women can be astronauts and fighter pilots, and they can be racing drivers too. Some people will want to point at the likes of Danica, Simona, and so on to say there's no need for it, but some will say increase the talent pool. The women's football analogy I gave you earlier more double edges to that sword. I guess it's made that little bit more difficult due to the fact that motorsport is one of the few sports where there's no hard men go here, women go here. Golf, snooker, pool and darts, even chess, have separate tournaments. But I don't know. I think it's better to hand it over to you. It is a tricky one. So then, a look at the fact that motorsport's all new female series won't be broadcast, at least for now. If this has got you thinking, then do like the video and obviously leave your own thoughts in the comments, but please try to keep them constructive. Massive thanks to the kind folks at Patreon for their continued support, and if you want to help support me at a more personal level, a link to Patreon is in the description, along with links to Discord, socials, and my F1 store affiliate link, so I get a bit of a kickback from any F1 stuff that you buy on an internet. 
Well, there's super thanks as well if you just want to top up my coffee cup. So until next time, I've been Ada Maud. Have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye. Thank you.